Quarter Report is brought to you by IG, Australia's number one CFD provider. With over 17,000 markets and extended trading hours, turn US earnings season volatility into opportunity. Get started at IG.com. Hello and welcome to the Quarter Report, where we take you through the hits and misses stateside for quarterly earnings. Let's get straight into it. The headline act overnight when it comes to earnings was Microsoft and also Google parent company Alphabet. Microsoft topping estimates for second quarter revenue as new AI features helped attract customers to its cloud and software services. Its cloud computing business grew by nearly a third in the most recent quarter. Alphabet, a bit disappointed as holiday season ad sales came in below expectations and the company said its spending on data centers to support its AI plans would surge this year. Let's take us through some of that detail. Uh, let's welcome Angelo Zeno from CFRA Research. Angelo, very good to catch up with you again. Thanks for joining us. So let's start with Microsoft then. Uh, it, it was a beat just in terms of that, uh, that revenue is concerned, but I do notice that um, perhaps a lot has been baked into that share price um, after hours that did come off. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And thanks for having me. So as far as kind of Microsoft is concerned, um, it was down about two two percent or so um, after the results came out. And to your point, I, I think a lot of the good news was baked into the stock. But the company did just provide guidance um, for the March quarter, and uh, most importantly, is is on the cloud side of things. So they had cloud growth of about thirty percent for the December quarter. They guided for the March quarter on the cloud side of things, also by about thirty uh, a stable uh, growth level, about thirty percent. So uh, the the stock actually turned around and actually you know, flatlined here uh, after the, that came out. So um, better than expected kind of cloud performance, we think, um, driving some of the, um, you know, improvement in sentiment here. And um, greater AI contribution, I think, is also important to note on the AI side of things. Made up about three percentage points of growth contribution in, in the September quarter. Here in the December quarter, it was about six percentage points. And it probably drives even more than that in the December, in the March quarter. Yeah, I note uh, that the chief executive there is saying we've moved from talking about AI to actually applying AI. How are they executing that at the moment? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think it's it's a situation now where um, you know it, it, you you were just getting more GPUs kind of embedded within kind of the the data centers here, and um, they're just you know there's this the potential for more AI workloads out there out of. Uh, Microsoft's uh, cloud business. So that's really kind of helping to drive um, both, uh, you know, ASPs within kind of their cloud business, but also, you know, actual kind of AI workloads out there. So that's what you're seeing, I think, on, on the um, the cloud side of things. You will continue to see that momentum, we think, as you progress um, throughout calendar 2024. And some of those kind of optimization headwinds that we saw on the enterprise side of things should also start to ease as we go through calendar 24. Angelo, how's its other units looking at the moment, in particular personal computing and business processing? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think as far as the their kind of more more personal computing segment, that was actually a, a business that actually has seen kind of its you know, best growth rate since the, the pandemic. You know, as you recall, I mean, clearly there were a number of headwinds out of that business here um, over the last kind of four or five quarters. And a big reason for that is that they had to lap, lap some of the, the pandemic headwinds and some of the PC declines that were out there. Um, you no longer have to worry about that. Not to mention that Activision deal has now been completed. So that's helping that their gaming business uh, on that side of things accelerate. So um, again, that's gonna that momentum will continue here over the next couple of quarters. So that is no longer a headwind. And then kind of as far as their you know their business productivity business and what have you um, continues to you know run at a healthy you know low double digit percentage pace. And that's uh, largely driven by their office business. They they didn't necessarily highlight, at least we haven't heard yet, anything on the co-pilot side of things. But um, you're still early days on that side of things. That you know that should build as we kind of go through over the next six to eight quarters. But again, um, they're not going to break out the revenue uh, trajectory on that side of things just yet because it's early days. Well, uh, let's move to its competitors, certainly on the AI front, at least in uh, Alphabet. Um, what did you make of those results? Certainly ad sales coming in below expectations. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because ad sales were actually above expectations after they reported Q3 results, but the stock took a hit because of um, the cloud disappointment. If you actually look at the numbers this quarter, the cloud side of things actually outperformed expectations and the, the stock has taken a hit, um, you know, maybe because I, I'd say more so because the stock has kind of run into the numbers here 
And, um, you know, there's still, you know, clearly some uncertainty, uh, given some of the regulatory uncertainty that, that lingers on this stock here in the foreseeable future. So, um, you know, I think the fact that they kind of, you know, maybe just, you know, got above expectations as far as the results are concerned, not to mention this is a company that does not provide, they don't provide forward guidance the way Microsoft does and some other uh, companies out there do. So um, you can't really get much clarity in terms of the outlook here for the March and June quarter for them like you can others. Angelo, how do you see that um, competition for ad budgets playing out, particularly with the likes of, you know, they're up against uh, Facebook, Amazon, TikTok and the like? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to have to fight, you know, for, for those ad dollars, you know, looking ahead. I think the good thing here, at, at least for the ad side of things, is um, AI is going to help them in terms of kind of continue to push kind of or further accelerate the shift you know, to digital ad from more traditional sources. So that will help kind of Alphabet, you know, in terms of being a tailwind. But to your point, I mean, you definitely have to fight, you know, with, with, in terms of getting more of that digital ad dollars with other um, options out there in the market. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to kind of see how this all evolves here. But our view here, at least on the search side of things here in 2024, it's a business that should grow kind of at a high single digit pace. And that's, that's a pretty good number um, for Alphabet. Angela, do you see perhaps in that AI space, there are going to be winners and losers or potentially all winners here when you particularly talk about that competition between chat GPT and, and BARD, for instance? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it, it's tough to say that everyone's going to be a winner here. I mean, that the market's going to try to flush out, you know, certain companies that might be kind of earlier adopters or beneficiaries relative to others. I mean, these companies, at least as far as the mega cap tech names are concerned, will all be able to generate some revenue or a significant amount of revenue on the AI side of things as that evolves over the next couple of years. Um, for us, Microsoft will continue to be a winner more on the enterprise side of things. And on our view is on kind of the more consumer centric side of things, uh, Alphabet should continue to do very well. And um, if you kind of look at, you know, micro, a big concern a year ago was that uh, Bing would start taking share and that never kind of came to fruition, right? I mean, um, Alphabet has continued to kind of have that um, dominance within the search side of things. Clearly things will change and evolve over the next couple of years. And I think there are some concerns on um, Alphabet's business model, you know, both on a regulatory side of things and a competitive side of things. Uh, as far as Microsoft is concerned, I think that's the, the easier story to tell. And that's the name um, you should continue to aggressively buy if you are more risk averse in nature. Yeah, and Microsoft, of course, having recently overtaken Apple as the world's most valuable listed company. Just a quick look ahead to Apple, Angelo, with expectations there. Obviously, concern in regards to slowing demand, in particular for its iPhone. What are you expecting? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're not looking for much on the iPhone side of things. We're actually looking for no growth in terms of calendar 2024 um, for their iPhone business. We're looking for no growth in, in the December quarter as well, and actually a decline in, in the March quarter as far as iPhones are concerned. I think what's more important is one, what happens on the services side of things, as long as they continue to, to show a, a good growth story on the services business. And, um, you know, the December quarter this year has a week less of revenue than a year ago. So you're not going to see the growth numbers that you saw in the September quarter um, for their services side, but will still be healthy in our view. Uh, let's call it 10% growth or so. And, you know, the guidance in the, in the March quarter will be important as well. But as far as Apple is concerned, everyone's going to have an eye on um, what what happens in China, what the growth number, what the number is in China. We're looking for you know, at least mid single digit declines. Um, if it ends up being worse than expected in terms of um, the China numbers, people may sell off on the stock. If it ends up holding up better than expected and the guidance is better than expected as far as China is concerned, this is a name that, that probably ends up um, you know, uh, bucking maybe some of the concerns that are out there. Uh, also, just about to launch its Vision Pro mixed reality headset that's, uh, that's coming. Um, what's that going to do, do you think? What are the expectations for that product? Yeah, I mean, it's a, from a unit perspective, I mean, we're only looking for a half million units here in calendar 24. It's, it's not going to be much as far as kind of driving the top line there. It might, it, it'll move the wearable segment a little bit um, for the March quarter and June quarter potentially, but it's more along the lines of um, the story they tell in terms of the Vision Pro. And, you know, for us, really the catalyst for um, Apple is less the Vision Pro and more of what they have to say in terms of Gen AI. You're not going to get it this quarter in terms of the, the quarterly results. That's probably something that's going to come at, at the developers conference in June. You're going to have to wait for that if you're an investor. But um, 
2024, if there is upside in the stock, will have to be about the story they tell on the Gen AI side of things. And that will tie to the Vision Pro here um, over time. So that is kind of an important part of the story as far as the Vision Pro is concerned and the potential for kind of lower price points in 2025 and beyond. Angelo, great to get an insight into your research there at CFRA. Thanks for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's uh, take a look at uh, what's ahead overnight. Um, in fact, we just had Starbucks out also missing the mark with quarterly sales lower in a sign demand for its coffees and drinks in the US abroad and abroad could be hitting a bit of a roadblock. Their shares, though, were higher in the overnight session as its China business showed signs of recovery. Shares of advanced micro devices were also lower after the chipmaker forecast first quarter revenue below estimates but projected strong sales for its AI processes. Fourth quarter revenue for its data segment, which includes its AI server chips, surged 38% from a year ago to more than $2 billion. Supermicro shares hit a fresh record high after the AI server maker delivered a quarterly result blowout and raised its full year revenue forecast significantly ahead of street estimates. The Pfizer posted a surprise fourth quarter profit helped by cost cuts and higher than expected demand for its COVID treatment. Sales of some high profile products though missed the mark. And in the uh, car making segment, General Motors reporting a lower pre-tax profit for its fourth quarter but gave investors an upbeat outlook for 24 and signaled more capital could be returned to shareholders. JetBlue looking at deeper cost cuts says the company forecasts a fall in revenue and high costs in the first quarter as it grapples with uneven travel demand. This as it seeks an expedited appeal of a ruling blocking its proposed merger with Spirit Airlines and Marathon Petroleum beating quarterly profit estimates supported by strong refined product margins and high refinery utilization rates, but expects to cut back plant activity sharply at the start of the year for maintenance. So checking on what we can expect tonight, and uh, Philips uh, 66, uh, Gilead Sciences, MasterCard, Qualcomm, and also Boeing in focus. Looking at also, we'll be keeping a close eye on Caterpillar earnings uh, with Australian investors' radar as Seven Group's West Track is the sole provider of Caterpillar equipment in the country. For more on what we can expect, we uh, caught up earlier with Jonathan Sakeda from the CFRA Research. So far, um, Caterpillar's had a very, very strong 2023, maybe a little too impressive. Uh, starting the fourth quarter, we're going to see Caterpillar, Caterpillar start lapping some very strong pricing realization that begun in fourth quarter 2022. So likely not gonna see the double digit revenue growth that we saw in the third quarter. Now, if you if you aggregated the first three quarters of 2023, you would see 17% sales growth. You'd see adjusted operating margin expansion of 630 basis points uh, to 21%. So very strong results thus far. But the flip side of that is that Caterpillar is going to have a very tough act to follow uh, starting in um, Q4 and, and looking out to 2024. When you take a look when, at the road ahead for Caterpillar, what are the expectations as far as what we're seeing with, I guess, particularly the U.S. economy and demand for its products? Yeah, U.S. economy has been uh, somewhat of a mixed bag. We saw kind of a drop off in uh, orders for durable goods. Uh, we're seeing the manufacturing sector right now in a very prolonged contractionary uh, cycle, though there are a few pockets where we're, we're pretty positive, one of that being the non-residential construction market. So there's been a number of legislative actions passed in recent years, including the IIJA, the IRA, the, the CHIPS bill, and all of this is flowing through to increase demand for non-residential construction. So looking to 2024, we're pretty positive on uh, activity there that should help to support uh, Caterpillar's largest segment, which is, which is construction equipment. More globally, um, how are you seeing it panning out for the company? So globally, uh, a little less optimism. I think uh, Europe, Africa, the Middle East should be a bit mixed. We're, we're expecting uh, strength from the Middle East construction trends, but uh, looking for overall flat results there. Um, also from Asia Pacific, we're looking for, for growth in several markets, but China continues to be uh, sluggish just on macro headwinds there. Um, though with that said, uh, China's been weak throughout 2023. We think that COPS in 2024 should be you know, easier though um, we're not expecting a whole lot of growth there. 
Um, with all that said, we are, uh, just to say, we're positive on Caterpillar. We think the valuation right now is attractive, a slight discount to their uh, forward price to earnings historical average currently. And on that, that pre-mentioned uh, strength in North American non-residential construction, we think that there is some upside to look forward to, uh, despite a, a tougher comparison in, in 2024. Overall, how do you see managing its balance sheet in particular, getting those costs under control, which it has been doing uh, to date, and also uh, potential price hikes? Right. I think that uh, as far as margin expansion, it's going to be more dependent on uh, managing those manufacturing costs for the machinery and equipment. Pricing has been a huge contributor to uh, expansion thus far in, in 2023. But, uh, you know, as, as mentioned, pricing is going to be less of a, a, uh, a factor there looking ahead as a kind of anniversaries uh, uh, actions taken previously. So I, I think looking to the over the next year, I think that they're going to continue to manage manufacturing costs well and kind of build on, on what they've achieved thus far. Um, and as far as uh, just a touch on free cash flow, currently Caterpillar is already above their uh, their guidance for four to eight billion. So we're expecting over eight billion dollars of free cash flow uh, for 2023, which we think is going to contribute to a potential dividend hike and share buybacks, which should help price action for the, the company shares. All right, so that's what we can expect from Caterpillar when its uh, results are released early February. That is the um, quarter report out of the States. Quarter report was brought to you by IG. Turn volatility into opportunity this US earnings season with extended trading hours on over 90 key US shares. Get started at IG.com.